Hi, uh, my name is Marek Ranis, and uh, with Janet Williams, I'm hosting this uh, series this semester. We are so grateful to be able to continue our Friday lecture series this year, which we started last year. I believe that every crisis creates opportunity, and for us, was actually COVID was opportunity to actually create a weekly uh, fantastic presentation of amazing artists and uh, create creatives every every single Friday. Um, Today we have uh, two guests. We have Adam Justice, who is the gallery director here at UNCC. And uh, he will be our host today. And he will actually introduce our amazing artist this Friday. So Adam, welcome. And let's start our lecture. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Welcome to 2021, finally. We made it. Hope you all are staying well out there, staying safe. And uh, we are really excited to be joined today by Georgie Nakima, AKA Garden of Journey, Charlotte-based artist. And to let you all in on a little secret, we're working with Georgie to bring some of her work to Row Arts building in the summer. So we might talk about that a little bit today, or we might kind of keep that under our hats until it's time to, to make a big reveal. But uh, Georgie, I wanna welcome you and thank you for joining us this morning for this great conversation. We, we got some really great questions in from students. Uh, so, so we will get to some of those. I don't know if we'll get to all of them because there are a lot, which is great. Um, but I would like to, to start out and just ask if you could, um, you know, first tell us a little bit about yourself. And I see that you've got some really great things happening behind you. So if you could kind of also tell us where you are, what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, um, to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I am from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I attended Northwest School of the Arts in high school, and I ended up going to Winston-Salem State, and I studied biology and chemistry. So I ended up working uh, in, for three years in research. Um, it was kind of all over the place and during that time, and that's when I, um, that's when I founded Garden of Journey, which is my brand. And Garden of Journey as a brand is really all about um, kind of honoring the the journey of becoming, um, you know, because it's so easy to be caught up in, in being goal oriented or even kind of chase the, the dream of, you know, from school to career to, you know, the whole nine yards. So I realized that I was going to slow cook into becoming what I was uh, desiring. So um, my last assignment, I was at uh, North Carolina State and I was studying at uh, Plants for Human Health Institute in Kannapolis. And after that assignment, I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to um, continue this, uh, you know, facade of just being comfortable in my career. I'm gonna take that leap of faith and um, I ended up kind of taking a year into really developing my portfolio, uh, networking, seeing what the creative community offered here in Charlotte. And I was uh, just really uh, uh, pleasantly surprised and just uh, how the mural, the evolution of murals is really um, taking, taking a uh, really just Really, it's I, murals are trending worldwide, but specifically in Charlotte, it's offering a a, a really fruitful palette for artists and creatives. So, um, I ended up working and you know, just mural by mural, I, I kind of created a a name for myself, and now I'm to the point where I am um, working on a mural right now, which is what's behind me, and also on the side, which you can't see, but. Um, right now I'm working on a, creating a, a maker space and um, it's going to be located where we're at here today. I'm really excited about it because uh, while there are a lot of places to showcase your work here in Charlotte, there's not a lot of places to actually incubate your work. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where all of this blooms. And, and speaking of that, I know that we've had a conversation about that before. Um, you did mention that, you know, once the makerspace is kind of open and operational, that you might be looking for some interns. So some students might be able to kind of help you out in the future. 
definitely looking for interns. So um, we are hosting our, uh, our, our first community interest session um, actually February 20th and we'll be doing ongoing, uh, we'll have ongoing um, meetings and both virtually and on site um, for those that can't make it or for those that you know just have a, a busy schedule. Um, we want to do a lot of hybrid type workshops and um, the idea of it is that you know you don't stop learning just because you've graduated. Um, education is going to be throughout your entire journey. So we want to provide opportunities for like informal um, informal learning sessions that are artist led, peer led, where we can really just bounce ideas off of each other, but also have um, develop, um, develop our niche and develop what we came to do as artists. So I'm really, um, right now, I'm really focused and passionate about just creating a, a fertile creative ecosystem where different artists can come together, whether you're a teacher or you're more into practicing or you're more into administrative, there is a lane for you and we can kind of build on each other. Great. And so behind you is, is a mural that you're working on at that space on the exterior of that space, right? Yes, yes. That, that, I'm, I'm glad you're there because that really gives everyone kind of a little a little insight into your, your design aesthetic. And I know in some of the questions from the students, uh, there were a couple that that kind of hinted on this this connection between your background in science and kind of where your artwork is now or or you know maybe the design elements of your artwork could you talk a little bit about you know does your scientific background kind of inform uh your your design aesthetic in your art i mean do you kind of feed off of some of the things that you learned as the as a scientist well i think as artists what we do is we we kind of take the chaos in our minds and then we turn it into a tangible form of art. So um, I'm not um, consciously trying to create scientific art, um, but I was deeply inspired by my studies. Um, the years that I took in, um, in first like my undergrad and also in working in research, it is such an inspiration learning about what we don't see um, kind of like uh, whether it's on a molecular level or even on a level of chemistry, you know, um, it was very inspiring for me. So I think that that may um, overlay with the geometric patterns that I do. Um, a lot of the time I'm, I, I consider myself a portrait artist, but I also do like abstract work. So um, when I do abstract, when I do portrait work, I am doing a lot of um, linear and geometric and really playing off of the angles of the face. And it's not so hyper-realistic, but it's becoming more, um, uh, I guess, there's, there's kind of a synergy between the foreground, the background and the portrait. So I do think that my science background helps create that um, visual dialogue that I'm putting forward. But like I said, it's just, it's very subconscious. Sure. Well, they're, they're kind of talking about, you know, what might inform your, your creative style. Uh, Lindsay asked, uh, she noticed that much of your work seems to have been inspired by indigenous art. And she's wondering if there's any meaning behind that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, and it, it's really about my perspective, um, me being a black artist from the American South and um, discovering what my identity is. Uh, you know, going to public schools, they, it, it's really surface what they um, teach and inform us about heritage, especially in, um, in America. Um, so I had my own curiosity, which was fueled by like just my family tree and um, who I was and what my roots were and um, what my heritage is. So I do consider myself, as, I mean, as, as a black woman, I do consider myself as an indigenous person. Um, I think in many continents that you travel to, there is an indigenous, um, there's an indigenous heritage and there's someone there that probably looks like me, you know? So I like to play off of that because um, I think as we kind of ride the wave of like nationalism and, um, 
you know, concepts like that, there's also like the fabric of life that ties it all together, um, especially through the diaspora. There's a lot of similarities as far as, um, and you can see it through the art. So um, if I look at, a, you know, indigenous art from Mesoamerica, they may have some of the same design elements from indigenous tribes in um, South Africa, or they may have the same, um, they may have uh, similar design elements in um, Brazil, you know, so all, or Australia, you know, so all of it is very powerful to me as someone who's kind of searching and exploring what my identity is. So I like to kind of bring that together through the art so that at the end of the day, it's not about, okay, this is a, this is black or this is uh, Mexican or this is, you know, whatever whatever nation that's coming from it's it's just something that feels very spiritual and very holistic and I, I think that speaks um that that speaks well to um your focus on community activism i mean i know that you're you're very open and very eloquent about how important community activism is to you especially as a street artist and uh nikki Nikki had a question about that, and uh, Nikki asks, you talk about your healing agent for the city, and can you talk more in depth about this? And Nikki says she's very interested in how your murals and artwork are used as a tool for change in the world, and what would you tell someone who had aspirations to heal as you do? Right. Um, I think, you know, um, like I said, it, it all comes from my perspective and just my being um, and, uh, you know, seeing so many holes in society and how that has affected me, how that has affected people close to me and just how intersectional um, many of our um, plights are. I think that art is, a, is an amazing palette because art is not bipartisan. It's not red or blue. It's every color. And so it's we can have those hard discussions, but use art as a as a canvas to really create the world we want to see. So um, there was a time in my life, and I can't say that it still isn't now, but there was a time where I was really frustrated at, you know, the world and kind of how everything has um, come to be what it is. And I think a lot of like millennials and like uh, Gen, Gen Z um, folks can relate to that. It's kind of like we've inherited um, a Rubik's cube of issues that it's very hard to see what the answer is out. So um, my insight as an artist is to, you know, think global but act local. So there are so many issues in the world. I can't solve all of them. I was not created to solve all the issues in the world, but I can choose like three topics that mean a lot to me and I can go from there. So um, those topics that really mean a lot to me are environmental justice, um, social justice, and my own cultural heritage as, as a Black woman. So um, these are topics that I really like to explore through my artwork. And I hope that just even through social media, by just engaging thoughtful captions, that it's just a way to kind of share um, thoughts that we all similarly have, maybe we don't discuss it so often, but um, just by having a dialogue, um, maybe it can be a whisper of change for someone. Yeah. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, although you're focused on these more global issues, you know, your, your action is on the ground in your community. And, you know, like, it, I think it's important for all of us to remember that the change that we can make locally you know, does create ripple effects that can, if enough of us do that in our own communities, can really kind of combine into a change that is much more widespread. And I think you do a really great job in the Charlotte community as an artist to, to help kind of promote that idea of change. And I think it really kind of, uh, it really fuels your, your energy as a street artist, as a public, you know, a person who creates public art for everyone to see. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Charlotte is the perfect environment because I mean, we're the nation's growing city, but we also have the worst upward mobility. So I think that you see a lot of um, societal praises and a lot of societal issues in this one city. So I always say that Charlotte is a great place to incubate 
whatever idea that you have, it's a great idea to kind of create that um, prototype. And um, eventually it can also carry on and be relative to other cities because, I mean, what other place do you have this type of, um, you know, what, what other place do you, do you have these ingredients? But here, it's a very unique place to, um, to really take, take hold of what you believe in. So that's, that's really my goal with the makerspace. Um, I see, you know, as far as institutional art and institutional funding, there are a lot of disparities between uh, whose works gets funded. I think um, most nine times out of 10, most institutional funding goes towards white male artists. But when you think about it, a lot of the practitioners of artists are actually women artists or an artists of color. So I'm thinking like, I have this opportunity as I am, um, as I am creating more visibility for myself, I have this opportunity to kind of build a nest and to have something where it can be fruitful for people with ideals similar to mine and people that also look like me. I think that's really admirable and, and smart. I mean, creating an access point for all artists to really kind of build on, you know, their own message and, and you know, to help build the community as well. And um, I wanted to go back a little bit. You, you talked about taking a year off to build your portfolio. And I imagine that building started with, you know, smaller two-dimensional works and eventually kind of evolved into large scale mural projects. Um, I'm wondering which came first. Did your engagement with the community kind of influence you to become a, a street artist or was it other way Did your interest in uh, creating these murals and street art kind of uh, re-engage you with the community around you? Or maybe right. they simultaneously, I don't, I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah, I, you know, I always love murals, but I never imagined I would be doing this as a career. I always considered myself more of a studio artist and a contemporary artist. So um, it was, but like, yeah, I was networking heavy in that year. Like I was in these streets, like seeing what was out there. I think that sometimes artists um, hit, a, hit a glass ceiling in finding support, but the, the key thing, in, the key thing in, obtaining support or gaining support is giving support. So I was going to people's shows, I was going to, you know, sh sh I was showing up to all the things. And in that process, I think an artist had invited me to do a mural. I had like bought some spray paint and never used it. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. Um, and I loved it. It was my first time working that big. It was scary. Um, the next mural I did, I volunteered at a community garden and I just painted a shed. And like I said, it was scary. It was, it was, a, um, it was, it was an experiment. But um, my uh, next mural was my first commission and um, I was astounded. Um, that check was just, oh, I was like, wow, I could get used to this. I could really get used to this. This, this could be sustainable for me. So um, after that, my third mural, I, I was like, this is my path. This is what I want to do. And it's taken a world of its own. Um, Cause like I said, I just, I never thought I would be doing this. And I've definitely been learning while driving, <laughs> but um, yeah. it'd be like that sometimes, you know? <laughs> sure. I think most artists, I mean, we, we all do that as human beings, but I mean, especially artists, if you, you know, your artists are always, you know, continually uh, reinventing what they're doing and themselves and, you know, moving on to the next thing and so i think all artists kind of function two steps ahead of themselves absolutely in kind of a, a nice way absolutely. and that's a really great segue uh, into another question that we had from a student uh, amber asks do you ever experience any conflict between commerciality and the social change nature of your work um i would say no for me it's a fun challenge um because I, I think I'm so um, cemented in this community work that anything commercial I do, I know I'm, especially in um, building this maker space, I know it's going to circulate back to this wider goal. I know, um, I know there, that there's this consciousness about, um, you know, where, where, where the money is coming from or where the support is coming from, but I'm very, um, 
you have to understand that as an artist, you're not just an artist, you're also an entrepreneur. So the, the, there's a part where emotions and business don't mix. And, you know, you may be getting support from someone that doesn't have similar ideals to you. Who cares? It's art. Um, make the visual meaningful and make the purpose and the breadth of your work meaningful so that it can speak for itself and then reinvest that into something that you really care about. Yeah, I, I, I think that's important. I think you hit it on the head. And, and, you know, a lot of these students are, I mean, they, they're curious about that. And, um, you know, of course you would be as, as an art student, as an aspiring right. artist. I mean, yeah. that's important. And, you know, I mean, if, if, the Trump, if Trump Towers commissioned me for a mural, I would do it. But I know that I could, I know that I could do so much with that. I know that I could reinvest that into my community, into other artists, and you know, like in, in at the end of the day, it's kind of like what you do with the currency that really matters. And and that um, that kind of leads to something that um, Alan is is asking about. Um, uh, wondering how you navigate the art world to seek opportunities in the markets where your work will be truly appreciated as opposed to just taking any job that comes along. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, selective as an artist in terms of which uh, which projects you decide to put all of your time and your, your energy into. Um, do you, how do you navigate that? Do you find that sometimes kind of difficult to do? Yeah, in the beginning, it's kind of just about, it's kind of like, um, finding a job is a full-time job you know so and, it, and there's a lot of rejection there's a lot of rejection so um i definitely had to develop a stomach for like you know getting that unfortunately you weren't selected like sometimes you know that you would have been that perfect one but they didn't see that in your application so um realizing that you know it, it is a lot to translate all of who you are as an artist into an application or, or an RFP. Um, that's very difficult, um, but just do it. And sometimes, it, sometimes the more that you do it, still a lot of rejection, but um, you end up finding who's really looking for you. And um, I, I think that it's all a part of the process. And, and staying present is really important. I mean, you talked about you know, you, you go to gallery shows, you visit with other artists, you meet with community members. I mean, um, as, as an artist, is anybody really um, interested in, in your community? I mean, staying present, staying out there, making yourself available. I mean, that's, that's really important. Definitely finding, uh, definitely uh, finding and developing and creating a community is super important, not just in person, but also virtually. Um, I think social media is an amazing tool social media shrinks the world and um i think that you know sometimes people use social media to look cool but it's not about looking cool it's about being friendly and um really supporting others really being uh really putting yourself out there and and giving what you can as, as long as you're not draining yourself and spending hours on it um i think it's an amazing tool to really connect with people so I mean, I slide up in people's DMs all the time just to say, hey, I love what you're doing. I would love to collaborate. And um, that's actually how I um, was able to work with uh, the uh, NBA finals, the NBA playoffs when they came into Charlotte. Um, that just came from being on social media and just seeing, um, seeing what uh, one of my peers was doing and thinking it was cool and just uh, saying, how can we work together? So, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of different Talk about that process. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, talk about that project a little bit with the NBA. I mean, you know, you've, you've had, I mean, recently you've, you've traveled to Puerto Rico to create a mural. Um, you um, created a mural um, at Ground Zero in New York City not too long ago. Um, so you mentioned the, the project that you worked on for the NBA Finals. Talk a little bit about that project, because that, that seems like a really large project with a lot of strings attached when you're working with an organization it was, it's that a large. very so yeah it was a very amazing project so um there i, I remember being on instagram and there's this page i found uh in the name of was project backboard who was uh founded by it's a nonprofit founded by dan peterson and what he does is he renovates basketball courts 
So um, we always stayed in contact. We always just kind of uh, stayed in communication. And then there was an opportunity, you know, that the NBA playoffs, it's the NBA playoffs, right? Or the NBA yeah. All-Stars, the NBA All-Stars. Okay. Um, the NBA All-Stars came to Charlotte and then the opportunity came and it was like a very random over the night, like, can you do this draft type of call? And um, it ended up working. And um, I was really amazed because, uh, you know, it was very professional. They had a team to assist me in painting it, which I never had before, um, usually on my own. So um, it was super awesome. And we did this at the Macquarie YMCA. They were very intentional about um, that YMCA because it's, uh, it's Charlotte's historically black um, YMCA, which is, in, um, which is on Betty's floor. Um, and uh, so I don't think that that court had been renovated in decades. So um, 2K Foundations, they really have a, a goal to really use um, art, design, and tech um, with sports, which I think is state of the arts because, yeah. I mean, art and sports has a way of bringing, bringing uh, polarities together. So um, it was really cool to do that. And um, like I said, in terms of creating community, my goal as an artist, whenever I, um, whenever I have a, a commission or, or anything, my goal is to create long-term relationships. It's not just about that one project. It's about keeping in touch. It's about letting them know what, how amazing it was working with them and, and just staying open. So now 2K Foundation is, um, they are one of our sponsors for the Echo Maker Space and they made it possible for us to buy the equipment that we're investing in right now. So it's kind of like a, an example of um, things coming together and then just kind of creating and creating a bridge for a long-term collaboration. Well, let's, uh, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your process as an artist. Um, Fia asks, uh, can you talk about your mural painting process? What surfaces do you like to paint on? What kind of paint? Um, and how do you get such a smooth mural surface? Oh, a smooth what? M mural surface. Oh, they're not always smooth. I wish they were. Painting on brick. I didn't know it would be yeah exactly exactly um my process um it varies so um i uh, often just sketch it out first um but now that i'm getting more comfortable with procreate i'm starting to do more digital i consider myself very analog so it's, it's definitely a learning curve but um so i normally draw it out first and i would just sketch it with the can um, sometimes I use a projector and that just helps keep everything proportional. So I might use a projector to just outline it. I won't project and paint the entire time, but I'll just like, um, I'll just get the outline together. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was uh, working at the, but sometimes you don't have the opportunity to use a projector, especially if the space is too tight and you really don't want to be dependent on using a projector. Um, so also use a spatial grid, which is kind of, the process is like you do a bunch of random symbols and, um, and then you lay those symbols over the image that you're painting. And then that way you can kind of use relativity to the symbols that you've done and you can get a, an idea of what the proportions are as you're painting. Um, it's harder to describe um, but then it is to visualize, but it, that helps a lot. But um, I always tell people when they, when they contract me that I can't, I'm, I'm an improv artist. So a lot of the times the mural is not gonna look exactly like the sketch. A lot of the times the mural is just going to show you the, the vibe, but the actual colors I'm laying down in, in real life because I'm, I'm more like a illustrator and a watercolor artist. I do gouache as well, but spray paint is a totally different relationship. So I need to actually spray in real time. 
And I imagine, you know, being a, a mural artist, you know, working outside and working in an, an environment, an atmosphere that you have no control over, you really don't know what it's going to be like until you're out there on site working and, you know, how the sun might shift, what shadows you might have, um, you know, the direction of the, the wall that you're working on in relation to, the, you know, how and when people are going to see the mural. I mean, all of these kind of variables that you really have no control over and, and can't really predict until you're there can, can influence your design too, I'm sure. Definitely the architecture as well, like how the, the relationship of the building with the wall, whether it's in, whether it's interior or exterior, and also just how you feel that day. You know, one, one day you might feel very peachy orange, the next day you might feel very turquoise. So um, all of that is going to relate to the final the, the process. And does, um, do you find um, an overlap between your, your smaller works, your two-dimensional works, your drawings and your, your gouache paintings and the, the larger pieces that you create? Um, do you find there's a connection between the two or are they kind of their own individual? I think that there's a connection, but I do think that they're kind of their own vibe. I think my works on paper uh, are a lot more detailed and a lot more kind of chaotic. And I think that my, my mural works are I tend to look more graphic and it looks, yeah, it looks more like, it looks more graphic, definitely. Well, you have to, I mean, in your mural work, you know, you're, you're having to paint at a larger scale so people can see it, but also using more vibrant colors and large fields of vibrant color. So it attracts people's attention. So it's, it's harder to work in, in details like that in a larger piece, I'm sure, especially if it's supposed to be for the public. Truly. Um, you know, we, the, the one question that is, is kind of on everybody's mind these days um, is, you know, how these recent months and, you know, the pandemic has really affected you as an artist, your process, your, um, you know, you as a, as a business person with your art. Um, and Natalie asks if specifically if, if the pandemic has affected you at all in your work. Well, I, I think that as, you know, I think artists can relate that, I mean, naturally, I think I've already been social distancing probably for the past like five years. Um, I, I, in order to work, you do have to spend a lot of alone time in order to get things done. I mean, even if you are a social person or extrovert like I am, I mean, it's still like long, extensive hours in order to get something done, whether you're writing proposals or whether you're just kind of executing and getting your work done. So, um, I, yeah, I've been social distancing for a long time now. Um, as far as, uh, you know, my business, I think that I've been pleasantly surprised and uplifted during this time. And I think it is because of the way that I use my voice and um, uh, by chance, you know, the after the murder of George Floyd, um, that really impacted how a lot of us really see and connect and relate with one another. So um, being very, um, using my voice, using it loudly and, um, and it really caused a lot of attention to what, um, to, to myself as an artist and especially working on the Black Lives Matter mural. Um, it, it really, I think everyone who worked on that mural um, just ha has been uplifted in, in what they were already doing. So um, yeah, 2020 was a, what a year, but it was a busy year for sure. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Black Lives Mural because um, it, 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 for those of you who may not know, it is on Tryon, um, very large scale mural that takes up a whole city block on the street of Tryon. And um, when that happened, I think it was June that, that that happened, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, I really, um, I really respect how that process came about. I mean, you know, I, I wasn't in the, the middle of those conversations, but it seemed to me on the outside that it was a very grassroots project. And it was, it was really great to see that while all of the artists you included were there 
working on Tryon to create this large Black Lives Matter mural, um, there were people from the community coming out and giving you all food and water and just, uh, you were attracting people to come to brushes or to give you water. I mean, it's really amazing to see what a community impact that mural had. And, you know, I'm wondering if you could kind of speak to, I mean, you kind of already have, but kind of talk about your involvement in that and, and how it may have changed your, your practice or your perspective? Well, I, I know the organizers. So um, I know that um, Tim Miner from Charlotte is Creative, um, Sam Guzzi from Brand the Moth, and uh, Damon Wesley from uh, Black Market. They were really pioneers in curating it and also directing it. So that that's also a testament of just being deeply involved in my community so that, you know, I think we had 72 hours to do it. Uh, Sam Guzzi gives me a call and she's like, hey, we have this thing that we're doing. I was like knee deep in commissions and other projects, but for me that took total priority because not only of the statement, but because of the impact and the delivery that we were doing it um, and the timing, you know? So um, I immediately um, just started drafting. And um, I think that's the first digital draft that I did with my iPad. Um, so I did the letter M um, and uh, I really wanted to be conscious about the colors that I used um, using very like Afrocentric colors, but also when you look at it, I kind of used the rainbow as well. Um, and uh, it was really awesome because there were a lot of artists that just volunteered their time, even if they weren't assigned a letter. They were painting, um, helping people, helping the community also paint it. Just people wanted to pull up and brush and add their mark to it. It was just a day that I will never forget because um, like I said, we had, we had like three days to do everything, including paint it. That's awesome. Well, I mean, from the outside looking in, it was, it was really inspiring to see that happen. And so I can only imagine what it felt like being a part of it. So thank you for- And it ties into the pandemic because, you know, um, the, the class of 2020 wasn't able to, to walk, you know? So I saw a lot of uh, graduates there taking their, um, taking their graduation pictures. And I think, you know, it became its own haven or safe space. So that was very powerful. Uh, Georgie and Adam, can I break in uh, before we wrap up because we slowly kind of getting to the end. Is there any way you can actually show us the project you're working right now? So maybe to give students some kind of visuals of your current process and uh, what's what's behind, what's behind. I can imagine everybody would like to see more and, okay. and more about it. That's a great yeah. Okay, I got you, I got you. So actually, um, let me flip my camera. So this is actually the mural that I'm working on right now. Wow. Which is to the side. Like, so um, this is what I'm doing. This is actually through um, the, it's a placemaking project funded through the city of Charlotte. So, um, and we're at East Town Market in East Charlotte. And so the whole proposal was to bring art outside of the arts district and into communities, you know? So where I'm at in East Charlotte, it has a heavy um, immigration population. It has a heavy black population. It's very diverse. So I really wanted to kind of angle at just different people, different angles, um, and uh, also just bring the elements into it. And it's very, it's not, and actually, and like I said, this is where the um, makerspace will be, not very far from UNCC at all. So I would just love to create a pipeline with the students so that, you know, I just feel like there's a lot of synergy. But yeah, this is, this is it. And actually, this is a mural that I painted here last year. And that's how I discovered this place. Um, so I've been kind of working with the developers here to see how we can bring more art here and more avenues to just collaborate and do creative things. That's great. And you, and you mentioned that there will be a part inside also, right? There will be a what? Uh, there will be an additional part of this mural inside of the building. Um, so the studio will be in the, the studio will be at this, um, at this plaza 
and there's gonna be murals all over. So we're gonna, it's definitely gonna be a um, huge art center. And I'm hoping that it's not only my art, I'm hoping that, you know, also up, upcoming um, artists or emerging artists can also like bring their, creative, their creativity into the building. Right. Yeah, but this is it, yeah. Well, Georgie, I mean, it's it's so glad that you were you were able to join us today, and really appreciate it. I mean, I, I find your work so exciting, and you know, the, the the topic and the subjects that you address are so important for all of us. And we're looking forward to having some of your work in row. So uh, we'll we'll work on that in the summer, and then in the fall, uh, hopefully, when we all come back to campus, we're going to be optimistic and say that is going to happen. Um, your your work will will be. Um, hopefully overlooking the, the row lobby. So we're really looking forward to having your work on campus and and maybe uh, in the fall we'll reconnect and meet at campus and meet some of the students too. That would be awesome. If there is an, um, if there is an email list, I would, I would love to just be able to send blurps out to you guys. Um, uh, nothing spammy but just so that you can be informed and just know um, know what our calendar is, know when to show up. And uh, that would be super awesome. And, and students can follow you. You're on Instagram at uh, Garden of Journey and your website is gardenofjourney.com. So they can follow you to keep up with what, you know, all the great things that you're doing and connect with you there too. Yes, absolutely. Follow me at Garden of Journey. Um, send me memes, ask me questions. Yeah. <laughs>